The jinn are an interdimensional beings that have existed before the human race, and uh, they have interacted with the human race more in the past than they do now. They seem to be very secret. The uh, the jinn, the word jinn actually means hidden, and that's a good name for them. But that's what we call them as humans. But um, what they call themselves as a race, no one really knows. They're called hidden because um, the, the Arabic people used to believe that they were invisible and that they could not be seen by humans unless they allowed it. The jinn in the Middle East and um, our people are very fearful of them. They respect them. They don't want to fool around with these beings. So we compared the jinn to angels, demons, fairies, shadow people, extraterrestrials, and cryptids like Mothman. And uh, we have a very solid case for how the jinn can be a masquerade behind many of our encounters with these entities. What we are saying is that the jinn, being tricksters and master shapeshifters, uh, can adopt these forms to pursue their own agendas as the hidden ones with us. Uh, the jinn have been pursuing uh, their own hidden agenda for quite some time. Uh, they, as Phil mentioned, they existed in Middle Eastern folklore pre-Islam, uh, and they have a lot of demonic traits, and so when a lot of the, the uh, tales about them got translated into the West, they were called the genie or sometimes even demons. And uh, ac according to the Quran, uh, when God created um, man from clay, uh, from earth and um, water, uh, he instructed the angels who he made out of a pure spiritual light and the jinn who are made out of a smokeless fire, he instructed the angels to prostrate themselves before uh, his new creation. And the angels, mm. uh, having no free will, uh, must obey, and they do. But Iblis, the leader of the jinn, did not, and uh, he is identified as a jinni in the Quran, but he was among the angels. He had access to the angels, and he considered uh, his kind to be superior to human beings, and he would not bow. And so he and his kind were cast out. Sounds like fallen angels, right? There's quite a similarity there, yes. And uh, so they were uh, condemned uh, to the lower realms. Iblis did appeal to uh, Allah for uh, a chance to redeem themselves, uh, and they have until Judgment Day. But uh, he vowed that he would uh, apply himself to tempting humanity to demonstrate the weakness of human beings. And that's very similar to the role that demons play in uh, our culture. There are a lot of stories around King Solomon and his ability to uh, control the jinn. He set them as slave labor to construct the temple of Jerusalem and even the entire city of Jerusalem. Phil, what do you think they look like? Well, according to the Koran, they're made of smokeless fire. To me, that indicates that they're plasma, the state between matter and energy. And um, they can take on different forms. And uh, they're, the plasma field that they're composed of is probably contained by a magnetic field which can be rearranged. They can take on different forms. They can take on the forms of animals. They can take on the forms of other people, humans. Um, they could take on the forms of what they like the most. Some of them are gargoyle-like demonic-looking entities. They're shapeshifters, and I also believe uh, that they are the shapeshifters mentioned by the Native Americans, the tricksters. Jinn are notorious for pulling pranks and tricks on people and twisting things around, um, especially the younger Jinn. And you have to remember that the Jinn live a very long time. Their lifespan in comparison to humans is very long. The Quran says a thousand years, but you know, the, the word a thousand is thrown around quite a bit. Right. I believe they exist, a lo they live for a longer period of time that perhaps, you know, perhaps tens of thousands of years. And they have young, and the young seem to be very curious about human beings. When I say the young jinn, a young jinn could be 500, 600, 700, 800 years old. <laughs>
no one really knows. In Islam, in the Islamic belief, the the devils, the so-called devil, is a jinn by the name of Iblis, and he was cast out of paradise with his tribe, a very high order of jinn, because they would not bow to human beings. Adam. Well, it's interesting too. In Arabic, for devil, it's Satan, which is right. which we call Satan, of course. Right, and that means the deceiver. Mm -hmm. But in Christianity. The devil is replaced by a fallen angel, not a jinn. The jinn are not mentioned in Christianity. They're replaced by demonic entities or fallen angel. In many of the uh, Muslim writings, they, um, they refer to devils. And when they refer to devils, they're referring to evil jinn. And then we have these like terrorist jinn who are very resentful for having lost their place. Uh, when human beings came onto the scene. The jinn who are hostile to us would like to see us out of their world. They consider this their world, and I think that they're looking for ways that they can infiltrate this world and anchor into it. They were in this physical world long before human beings, and they had fantastic technology, they had cities, they were building, but they made war with each other they started polluting the environment, and uh, they were on the verge of destroying themselves because they became uncontrollable and very powerful. And according to the Islamic legend, Allah said to the angels, get them out of there. They're going to destroy the physical universe, put them in a place where they cannot hurt others and themselves. They seem to be ruled by kings very powerful jinn and we don't know if there are a number of jinn kings or one jinn king but people below that they definitely um they have clans and the clans are once again they have a clan leader and the clans are divided into families and the families have a family leader jinn are ranked according to their knowledge and how old they are what do you think they want with the human race I think that they want to have uh, domination over us. Uh, we're the ones who have dominion over this world, this physical realm, and many of the jinn feel that that is rightfully theirs. Areas that have uh, caves and mine shafts in them, especially old abandoned mine shafts, uh, I, are really riddled with jinn. I think that we have many jinn habitats right here in America. Most of the jinn, by the way, if they're not taking a hideous form, uh, which they do to scare humans sometimes, they're supposed to be like made of the purest of fire and they can take on very, very wonderful, beautiful forms. But they do have two sexes. And, and one of the other things is, is that um, they seem to be able to have children with humans and that's forbidden in Islam. The Queen of Sheba was supposed to be the child of a human and a jinn. The jinn are everywhere. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have gin pockets right here in America. The gin are chameleon-like in their ability to make us think that we're dealing with something else. What's going on here? When you factor in the idea of the gin, this ancient race, into, equation, into the equation, the entire paranormal and the UFO phenomena start, starts to make sense. One thing you have to consider about dimensional beings in the UFO phenomena is that even Dr. J. Allen Hynek, who was the dean of ufology, he believed that, you know, most of this UFO stuff is dimensional in nature. They're beings from sure. another dimension. In Middle Eastern lore, prayers will burn the jinn, and that causes them to, to want to get away from you. Religion talks about hell. Could they be talking about where the jinn hang out? Um, I think they're in kind of a hell. They're like in a, a dimension that's devoid of uh, physical pleasures, which they want. The jinn do have free will, and so they really can't be cast away. But according to the Islamic belief, jinn as well as humans, as angels, are going to be answerable to all the things that they've done at the day of judgment and 
according to what I found out, some jinn do believe this. They do believe in God, so they believe that if they do things wrong, they're going to be held accountable for it. But then again, some jinn don't. Some jinn, just like people, are psychotic, and they will come after you, and uh, they will cause you harm. But most of the time, I think they like to masquerade themselves and appear like spirits or extraterrestrials or spirit guides or um, other things like that, ascended masters, just to walk in and get your confidence to make this connection. And once you make the connection, they're very hard to get rid of. I do believe that jinn are responsible for a lot of our beliefs in different gods and demigods and so on. Next up, Geneva. We go to uh, Mosul, Mississippi, east of the Rockies. Hey, Geneva. Hey, George Norris. It's nice to get through to you, and good morning, Rosemary and Phil. Um, I have had encounters with Jens all throughout my life. Uh, when I, It all started back when I think I was about 16 years old. He was about 5 foot 2, and uh, he was real skinny so skinny that I could see his ribs and he had huge dark black eyes you could not see through them his skin was uh, a light gray and it looked to be like leather and he had horns gray horns coming from the front of his forehead all the way into his and they, they grouped together in the back into his spinal cord. And uh, this thing was so scary to me that I fell to my knees outside of my shop. He spoke with his mind to me. He said if I would tell him his name, uh, and he carved them out with his long fingernails onto a tree. And when I seen it, I was so I couldn't read it, but anyway, he said that if I t told him his name, he would tell me all the secrets that I would want to know. And then I looked down at the ground, and I seen thousands of snakes, all different kinds. You could barely walk because of the snakes. Well, I ran into the house to where my mother was by the sink, and I told her what I encountered. And she said, you didn't say his name, did you? And then we all got into the truck. And as we were leaving out of the drive, I saw this woman standing by uh, some gas tanks that used to be a little store there. And she was standing there, and I could see her head just roll off of her shoulders. And another time that I experienced him, he was sitting, it was a different gen, uh, same color tone and he was sitting at the end of my bed and he his eyes were a putrid green and he was eating flesh and blood was draining from his mouth and he said that he was going to be the one to possess me the flesh eating ghoul is a type of gin so um, these are all characteristics that we would associate with a gin entity Jinn were here to teach humans not to make the same mistakes. But unfortunately, we are polluting the planet. We are making war with each other. We are making terrible weapons to destroy each other. We're following the same pattern that according to the ancient legends of the Jinn did and uh, why they were taken out of this world by a higher order of beings. Human beings are doing the same thing. Do they like chaos? They do, yes. Uh, they like to keep people off balance, and they find uh, your most vulnerable point, your Achilles heel, uh, for doing that. All right, Rosemary, thank you so much. Phil, always a pleasure, my friend. Take care. Thank you. And infiltrate this world and anchor into it. They were in this physical world long before human beings. And they had fantastic technology. They had cities. They were building, but they made war with each other. They started polluting the environment. And uh, they were on the verge of destroying themselves because they became uncontrollable and very powerful. 
And according to the Islamic legend, Allah said to the angels, get them out of there. They're going to destroy the physical universe, put them in a place where they cannot hurt others and themselves. They seem to be ruled by kings, very powerful jinn. And we don't know if there are a number of jinn kings or one jinn king. But people below that, they definitely, um, they have clans. And the clans are, once again, they have a clan leader. And the clans are divided into families. And the families have a family leader. Jinn are ranked according to their knowledge and how old they are. What do you think they want with the human race? I think that they want to have uh, domination over us. Uh, we're the ones who have dominion over this world, this physical realm, and many of the jinn feel that that is rightfully theirs. Areas that have uh, caves and mine shafts in them, especially old abandoned mine shafts, uh, I, are really riddled with jinn. I think that we have many jinn habitats right here in America. Most of the jinn, by the way, if they're not taking a hideous form, uh, which they do to scare humans sometimes. They're supposed to be like made of the purest of fire and they can take on very, very wonderful, beautiful forms. But they do have two sexes. And, and one of the other things is, is that um, they seem to be able to have children with humans and that's forbidden in Islam. The Queen of Sheba was supposed to be the child of a human and a jinn. The jinn are everywhere. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have gin pockets right here in America. The gin are chameleon-like in their ability to make us think that we're dealing with something else. What's going on here? When you factor in the idea of the gin, this ancient race, into, equation, into the equation, the entire paranormal and the UFO phenomena start, starts to make sense. One thing you have to consider about dimensional beings in the UFO phenomena is that even Dr. J. Allen Hynek, who was the dean of ufology, he believed that, you know, most of this UFO stuff is dimensional in nature. They're beings from sure. another dimension. In Middle Eastern lore, prayers will burn the jinn. Um, I have had encounters with jinn all throughout my life. Uh, when I it all started back when I think I was about 16 years old. He was about five foot two, and uh, he was real skinny, so skinny that I could see his ribs. And he had huge, dark black eyes. You could not see through them. His skin was uh, a light gray, and it looked to be like leather. And he had horns, gray horns, coming from the front of his forehead all the way into his, and they, they grouped together in the back into his spinal cord. And uh, this thing was so scary to me that I fell to my knees outside of my shop. He spoke with his mind to me. He said if I would tell him his name, uh, and he carved them out with his long fingernails onto a tree. And when I seen it, I was so, I couldn't read it. But anyway, he said that if I t told him his name, he would tell me all the secrets that I would want to know. And then I looked down at the ground and I seen thousands of snakes all different kind you could barely walk because of the snakes well i ran into the house to where my mother was by the sink and i told her what i encountered and she said you didn't say his name did you and then we all got into the truck and as we were leaving out of the drive i saw this woman standing by uh some gas tanks that used to be a little store there and she was standing there, and I could see her head just roll off of her shoulders. And another time that I experienced him, he was sitting, it was a different gen, uh, same color tone, and he was sitting at the end of my bed, and he, his eyes were a putrid green, and he was eating flesh 
and blood was draining from his mouth, and he said that he was going to be the one to possess me. The flesh-eating ghoul is a type of jinn. So um, these are all characteristics that we would associate with a jinn entity. Jinn were here to teach humans not to make the same mistakes. But unfortunately, we are polluting the planet. We are making war with each other. We are making terrible weapons to destroy each other. We're following the same pattern that according to these. And they had fantastic technology. They had cities. They were building, but they made war with each other. They started polluting the environment. And uh, they were on the verge of destroying themselves because they became uncontrollable and very powerful. And according to the Islamic legend, Allah said to the angels, get them out of there. They're going to destroy the physical universe, put them in a place where they cannot hurt others and themselves. They seem to be ruled by kings, very powerful jinn. And we don't know if there are a number of jinn kings or one jinn king. But people below that, they definitely, um, they have clans. And the clans are, once again, they have a clan leader, and the clans are divided into families. And the families have a family leader. Jinn are ranked according to their knowledge and how old they are. What do you think they want with the human race? I think that they want to have uh, domination over us. Uh, we're the ones who have dominion over this world, this physical realm, and many of the Jinn feel that that is rightfully theirs. Areas that have uh, caves and mine shafts in them, especially old abandoned mine shafts, uh, I, are really riddled with gin. I think that we have many gin habitats right here in America. Most of the gin, by the way, if they're not taking a hideous form, uh, which they do to scare humans sometimes, they're supposed to be like made of the purest of fire and they can take on very, very wonderful, beautiful forms. But they do have two sexes. and. And one of the other things is, is that um, they seem to be able to have children with humans, and that's forbidden in Islam. The Queen of Sheba was supposed to be the child of a human and a jinn. The jinn are everywhere, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have jinn pockets right here in America. The jinn are chameleon-like in their ability to make us think that we're dealing with something else. What's going on here? When you factor in the idea of the jinn, this ancient race, into, equation, into the equation, the entire paranormal and the UFO phenomena start, starts to make sense. One thing you have to consider about dimensional beings in the UFO phenomena is that even Dr. J. Allen Hynek, who was the dean of ufology, he believed that, you know, most of this UFO stuff is dimensional in nature. They're beings from sure. another dimension. In Middle Eastern lore, prayers will burn the jinn, and that causes them to, to want to get away from you. Religion talks about hell. Could they be... Stories around King Solomon and his ability to uh, control the jinn. He set them as slave labor to construct the temple of Jerusalem and even the entire city of Jerusalem. Phil, what do you think they look like? Well, according to the Koran, they're made of smokeless fire. To me, that indicates that they're plasma, the state between matter and energy. And um, they can take on different forms. And uh, they're, the plasma field that they're composed of is probably contained by a magnetic field, which can be rearranged. They can take on different forms. They can take on the forms of animals. They can take on the forms of other people, humans. Um, they could take on the forms of what they like the most. Some of them are gargoyle-like, demonic-looking entities. They're shapeshifters, and I also believe uh, that they are the shapeshifters mentioned by the Native Americans, the tricksters. Jinn are notorious for pulling pranks and tricks on people and twisting things around, um, especially the younger Jinn. And you have to remember that the Jinn live a very long time. 
their lifespan in comparison to humans is very long. The Quran says a thousand years, but you know the, the word a thousand is thrown around quite a bit. Right. I believe they exist a long. They live for a longer period of time. That perhaps you know, perhaps tens of thousands of years, and they have young. And the young seem to be very curious about human beings. When I say the young jinn, a young jinn could be 500, 600, 700, 800 years old. No one really knows. In Islam, in the Islamic belief, the, the devils, the so-called devil, is a jinn by the name of Iblis. And he was cast out a paradise with his tribe a very high order of jinn because they would not bow to human beings adam well it's interesting too in arabic for devil it's satan which is right. which we call satan of course right and that means the deceiver mm -hmm. but in christianity the devil is replaced by a fallen angel not a jinn the jinn are not mentioned in christianity they're replaced by demonic entities or fallen angels in many of the uh, Muslim writings, they, um, they refer to devils. And when they refer to devils, they're referring to evil jinn. And then we have these, like, terrorist jinn who are very resentful for having lost their place uh, when human beings came onto the scene. The jinn who are hostile to us would like to see us.